Welcome live, my name is Josh Cohen. We're here in the Food 52 Test Kitchen, here with our honored guest, Nigella Lawson. It's lovely to be here. We're here to celebrate your new cookbook, is that right? Yeah, indeed. Cool, can we show the people out there in live Facebook land, uh, what, what, do we have, <laughs> what do we have going on here? It's good, at my table. Okay. And there I am at my table, there, mm -hmm. doing something to a bread roll, a <laughs> bit of bread. Now I know your vibe is sort of like, you cook very naturally, you should have fun in the kitchen. Is that sort of what you're going for with this book here? Well, I suppose so, but I think it was really just wanted to talk about home cooking, mm -hmm. uh, which is, I suppose, really what Food 52 is talking about. Yeah. And actually, for so many people, when you say home cooking, they think you're talking about some sort of uh, bland food from the past. And actually, home cooking is very dynamic. But, but all of us who cook at home, we've got other constraints on our time mm -hmm. and other demands. So it's about food that tastes really good, but it, it is really manageable. Yeah. And uh, you can do it and have a relaxed time. I do think that your philosophy here is very similar to what we try and yeah. do at Food 52, where it's like so. the, the flavor should come first, but it also needs to be manageable for people who are like working or on a weeknight, that sort well, of quite. thing. Quite. Hi. I mean, uh, you know, every time I think about doing something that was really complicated, I just think, oh, I just am too tired, I can't be doing it. So. You know, it's food I can manage when I have people over yeah. and finishing my work and getting everything else done. I think the recipes that we selected actually to do live today are a perfect example of the sort of thing yeah. that like if you have someone drop in or you want to whip up dinner mm -hmm. really quickly, it's totally doable. It's like weeknight dinner right here for you. Okay. <laughs> Uh, do you want to start here? We have so, lamb chops. We have got lamb chops. These are some spicy lamb chops with a mint and preserved lemon salsa. Yeah. We're going to get onto the preserved lemons in a minute. So, I'm always, I'm all, I've always got food in a freezer bag yeah. that I'm about to marinate. <laughs> and here they are, just easier, it saves washing up. You don't need to use as much liquid. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to do, shall I do oil first? Yeah, I think oil first. Okay, so some olive oil. <laughs> too much, just a little bit of moisturization. Now, something I can never stop doing, which is zesting lemons, because there's so much flavor in the zest, mm -hmm. all those aromatic oils, and I it pains me when people just use the juice and they don't use the zest as well. Yeah. Mm, wonderful, so I'm just gonna grate this in. While you're working on that, I'm going to keep myself busy over here doing the chopped salad. Which Very is also good. In your cookbook. Yes. Uh, and that way, I have something to do. Here. Well, yeah, but <laughs> you, anything you want to do over here, always, you know, feel free. Sure, I, I keep can an eye on the fact that I'm not going to spill my lemon zest all over the counter. <laughs> well, we cheated because that uh, technically has to marinate for like 30 to 40 minutes. Yes, but I mean, if you had so we, 15, we you a, could. Oh. I'm going to carry on anyway. Yeah. You know. So. That's good to know for the people at home where sometimes a recipe will say mm. like 25 minutes and the home cook will think I have to do it for exactly 25 minutes. But there minutes. is also a reason why I say that, mm -hmm. which is that if these have been in the fridge, mm -hmm. they if, if you cook them from fridge cold, yes. it's not ideal. So really, I would say you need that you want to kind of be marinating enough time to let them get to room temperature. Right, they cook better when they're I know that Americans have a horror of letting meat come to room ah. temperature. But I, I don't like cooking it. I mean, it's I don't to go cold. It's very difficult, especially if you want the meat pink. Yeah. Because you know you want you don't want it cold inside. Okay. This is not a good thing to do if you have any cuts or anything. I don't. Mm. And you can see I'm see I'm letting pips fall out. I don't because it doesn't really matter. Right. Because by the time it goes on the grill, it doesn't. Yeah. Matter. And anyway, you know, it's, right, right. Mm -hmm. I'm going over here a minute and ruining the stage dressing. <laughs> That's what uh, live cooking is all about, yeah. right? And so, <laughs> garlic, which I do, I use the microplane for as well. Mm -hmm. I find that microplane garlic and lemon zest are two of my favorite ingredients. Yes. You could add that to Anything. so many savory things. Yes, I know. And in fact, it's, it's um, just starting off and actually when you fry, Mm. Just, you can smell it in the air, it really perfumes the dish beautifully. Yeah. One of my favorite tricks is when something is hot just coming out of the pan, yeah. to add a little bit of microplane garlic to it yeah. then, and yes. you get that perfume. Uh, yeah. and... mm. Right, that's seemed to have enough of that there. 
some dried mint. I love mint, I think it's underused. Mm. So this recipe is all about going for it. <laughs> Red pepper flakes, crushed chili, whatever you want to call it. You call this kosher salt, don't you? Yeah, yes. how do you call it? Well, I say sea salt flakes. I <laughs> we should flakes. do a whole separate Facebook Live and somehow you <laughs> yes, say what, things how and how I say things. Okay, now this is always good, so a bit of squidging around. Uh, I'm supposed to mention also, I forgot. What are you supposed uh, to mention? Because this is a live uh, broadcast, if people are having questions, they can write in on Facebook and Gabriella, our wonderful producer here, is going to read your questions out right. to us so we can interact with people. Oh, very good. That's so, very exciting. Uh, one time I think my mom tried to write in, so of don't do that. Of course she did. <laughs> right. Where I'm going to start on my salsa. Okay. I'm going to clear the decks a bit. I have a garbage. <laughs> There. Right. Some mint, fresh mint now. Now, mint and lamb is like a famous combination, right? It, uh, it, well, it have, is. Do you have nostalgia for those? Yes, and in fact, this flavors? is. Do you know, so when, when I was growing up, my mother always made a mint sauce mm -hmm. to go with lamb. But she made it uh, with fresh mint, mm -hmm. a teeny bit of sugar, boiling water, and vinegar. And I, this is really like a modern uh, sort of reworking, but mm -hmm. instead of vinegar, I'm using some intense, sharp, preserved lemons. Yeah, yeah. Now, I know that it's not an everyday ingredient, but the thing is, once you get into the whole world of, you know, these jars of preserved lemons, I don't know if I've got one to show, you just can't stop using them. Now, normally I do, if they're this size, mm -hmm. I'd use two, Yeah. but I'm going to just do one. Now, I'm going to move this a bit because it's it is quite good. Yeah, so these, they're you can in... You pick it up at like a Middle Eastern specialty store. Yeah, and they're available in more and more places. Yeah. Have um, you ever done your own preserved lemons? Yes, I have. You need I a lot have. of patience for that, you right? do. Well, you do, but <laughs> I love the ones you get in jars because they're all ready to go. Yeah. And they add such wonderful flavor. Yeah. So much, whether you're making like a vinaigrette or uh, roast cauliflower yeah. or just anything. So now for people at home who might not be familiar, you're not going to use the flesh of the lemon, you're going to use the peel, is that correct? No, or do you use the I whole use thing? I use the whole thing. So bold, bold move, no, Facebook no, no. Live. So, or, <laughs> yeah, no, no. so you always, every recipe always says, mm. just use the peel. Right. Why? Well, it can be a pretty powerful flavor. That's I think. what I'm going for. There you go. You know, as a sauce, I think that works because anyway, you're just I, using I know, a little bit. But I feel just because some people say that, uh -huh. everyone then says that, mm. and for no good reason. Right. Yeah. I mean, how many people don't use the the inside, and they probably really? never even taste it to see whether they no, like it or not? So I always use the inside. I don't mind. I, it may be inauthentic, but it doesn't make sense to me not to use it. Well, you know, whatever okay. tastes good, I think. Is the, whatever uh, tastes good is the rule. I'm I see we might have some questions. We've got from some the questions audience. coming okay, in. Okay, I'm um, just going to put some garlic uh, in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gary is wondering if you can wash the freezer bags and use them again when you're doing something marinated like this. Well, my great aunt would have done. Ah. Um, I. I don't if it's had oil, because I think, I don't know how long you'd have to keep washing it. Mm. Um, but I mean, if anyone's up for that, why not? And we had a question from Deborah, and she's asking if we're just marinating but you could, the By the way, I'm just going to say as well, you can put it in a dish. You can put it in like in a Pyrex dish, and just leave it to marinate like that. Right. Then you're not even using plastic at all. Which is yeah. the way of the future. Which is the way of the future. <laughs> okay, I, I'm going to listen because I'm going to make a noise in a minute and so I won't be able to answer questions. So do you want to give a... Oh uh, yeah, um, actually we have a request for the camera. If we can tilt down a little bit to see what's going on on the counter, we can definitely do that. <laughs> okay. Right. So I'm going to put some oil over this. Beautiful. <coughs> and... So I've never used this particular contraption before, but I'm going to give it a go. <laughs> okay, this one I like to be on max. It's quite a small blade. Now, I'm, I love salt and everything, but I don't um, add salt to this because the lemons, I'm going on max mm -hmm. here, the lemons are quite salty when they're in the brine. I think I use one that's a bit more fierce tone. 
So don't mind me, I'm just going to carry on blitzing forever. <laughs> What kind of consistency are you looking for here? I'm looking really for a consistency that is almost uh, smooth, but it's flecked rather than smooth, but certainly not with large pieces. It should be emulsified. So I'm just going to carry on. We were working with um, in downstairs in our kitchen. For those that don't know, we also have an event happening tonight with Nigella, yeah. also promoting the book. And we're doing your recipe where fish is fried, covered in collection. Oh, yes. And it gets a little dot of a pea puree. That has pea puree really with mint in yeah. I know. Mint's such a wonderful ingredient. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I love it in salads, too. And in fact, but I, I'm making this now with mint, but I actually commonly make this with a kind of whatever herbs I can find. Yeah. Yeah. I've once made a mixture of cilantro, parsley, a bit of mint, and some uh, oregano. That's because it's just what I have. Because I always keep these um, lemon around. Yeah, I was and I should in cilantro. I think that that yeah, would work really well. It would, and I have to say as well that um, the juice, which I do need a teeny bit of, mm. the juice from the uh, limes, or the lemon limes, mm -hmm. the lemons, is you know when it's a brine, so you have to be a bit careful. Right. But I actually, I make a what I call a lemon dirty, dirty martini oh, because yeah. instead of using the uh, you know jar. Of the jar of olives yeah. in that liquid. I Preserve use a splosh. Uh, yes. Mm. See, look, can That's you see? Really it's up. really. Like <laughs> so I feel I could carry on, but I might drive everyone mad if I carry on. <laughs> I do want a. That didn't make it in the book, did it? Preserve, what? Preserve lemon during the It did. I'll show you a picture oh. of it. Okay. Oh my goodness me, yes. And it's actually got a Food 52 cocktail shaker ah. in, on, in the yes. shot. I'm going to. You can do that. I'm going to carry on. I think this is sort of okay. I mean, I could go on, but... Tonight at the event, we're going to serve this one. Oh, uh, that's Negroni. divine. Negroni's bagliato. Yes. Which is just like Negroni. There it is. Can you Dirty see? lemon martini. And there's the... Ah. Josh, can you yeah. put that around? So can see that? Okay. Another question coming from Laura. Yes. She asks, when you're cooking at home, are there any tools in your kitchen that you can't live without? Mm. A, a fine microphone grater. I, no, I don't normally use the zester. I use the, I frankly use, let me put this back here. I use the uh, lemon, I use the fine zester for absolutely everything. Mm. I might be moving this soon. Right. Are you... Should we swap it in? Is this going to be hot enough? I'm going to make it a little hotter now. <gasps> <laughs> We've got another question from Heather while we're heating up the pan. Um, do you like to change things up during the week or do you have a favorite go-to <clears throat> meal for weeknights? I kind of do. I do a mixture. I, I, what I really love is the sort of cooking you do when you open the fridge. I call it like a fridge forage. Mm -hmm. When you open the fridge and you just think, I've got to use all things up. My Monday cook <clears throat> is always yeah. right. My, I my wife calls that the pantry challenge. Yes. Well, Try I, and save see, a little bit of money. And I also. love that. <laughs> so I do, do like that. But I do, I kind of do have things I fall, but I fall back on quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And I know, for example, if I make, I often have the ingredients for this sauce, because what I know about it is that you can do something very plain. You know, you can make a herb sauce, roasted chicken, and it's perfect. Yeah, I yeah. do, I mean, I, I have to say, there's not a week that goes by without roasting at least chicken, one chicken. I mean, <laughs> someone on Twitter once said, I was the person that mother hens, um, you know, warn their chicks about, because I'm always <laughs> roasting a chicken. I mean, <laughs> I make that, what I make nearly every week as well is a, actually it's a vegan um, recipe, it's a butternut and a sweet potato curry, mm. which I use, I make the paste, I use the same, you know, uh, immersion blender to oh, make yeah. the paste, and I nearly always make that, and I also, because it gives me, if I make a big batch of it, I know I've got some in the fridge too for when the need arises. Yeah. That, no, I have, we're not <coughs> doing that recipe here, but that's on my website, which is easy uh, enough to get. But now I'm gonna. Do you think? Shall I go for it? Yeah. Are you let's, happy? Let's do it. Well, we can hear. Yes. Yeah. You might not be able to see us in a minute because we'll uh, be completely. We're gonna smoke you out. Completely smoked. Gonna see if I can get all of them in. Don't know if I've arranged it as well as I might have. Mm -hmm. That can go that way. 
Actually, I'll leave that one. Let me... I'm just going to have to have a bit of a wipe down. Now for... Yeah, I'm just washing my hands. <laughs> Carry on. So I will listen to you. For a lamp top like this, uh, you'd say like two to three I would do aside. about two minutes aside because yeah. I like it pink. Yeah. But you and know. That's important to know what you're aiming for. Yes. Some people will ask me, you know, how long should I cook something? And I think it really depends. You should have a clear image in your mind of what you're going for. Yes. Because some I'm, people want it well done and some people want it pink and I give yeah. them different I mean, advice. when it's been marinated as well, it's so tender. Yes. So that you can afford to have a... You know, it, it, it wouldn't really matter for overcooked. For me, uh, I prefer not. Right. But then, you know, it should keep it. And what's quite interesting, and I think this is about cooking in general, is that they're not the same flavours exactly because dried mint is very different from fresh mint. Yeah. It, there's something much, you know, smokier about it. But it's it's that the flavours echo one another. Mm -hmm. It's like a, a different. So the fresh lemon and dried mint paired with the preserved lemon and the fresh mint. So it's. A bit like, you know, backing singers often wear almost versions of the same outfit, but they're yeah. a teeny bit different. That's like great that. imagery, yeah, you know. Have I, you, can you give me a spoon? Uh, I want to taste to see if I need, what else I might need. I can use this part of the just, fork. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, I would really go on for longer to make sure these bits of preserved lemons are completely smooth, but I was slightly losing the battle with the blender there. Yeah. Wow, mm. I love, I love it. It's you can taste it. it it's quite intense. The yeah. I think if I've run out of garlic too, I would consider putting more garlic in. Although I can feel the garlic coming through now that I say that. Yeah, you know, the longer it's in your mouth, you can. <laughs> I really like that idea of the dried mint in the marinade as like yeah. a backup singer to the fresh mint in the sauce and the same thing with the preserved lemon in the I know, which is, and they go well. But as I say, it's very nice to have a sauce you can make mm -hmm. and you know you can add different herbs in the same way as, you know, you could use thyme. Yeah. Here with this, I just think, the, as I say, mint, Mint is all, I've always found it very underused. Do you find that a lot of your recipes in this cookbook, there can be some like swap-ins where if you don't have a certain ingredient, it's easy enough to use something I, else? Yes, a lot of things can be swap-ins, but it's so much to do with people's own tastes about mm -hmm. what they use. Yeah. You know, you have a recipe with cilantro, someone doesn't like cilantro. If it's the main focus of the recipe, do another recipe. Right. But if it's just, a, you know, a herb that's being used, uh, um, as part of everything else, or as a final uh, flavouring at the end, then, you know, well, I change it. Yeah. But in the same way, though, I feel, so, because I cook at home, mm -hmm. I hate it when, if you're, when you buy an ingredient, a particular product or something, and then you just think, well, what do I use it for again? So, if I have a recipe, as I do, for, you know, preserved lemons. And in fact, the first time I made this was because I had preserved lemons in the house. Yeah. So when I do a book, I would always make sure there are lots of recipes. To, if I'm not going to send anyone, not even myself, out shopping for one recipe. Yeah. I mean, obviously you do have to, like a fresh ingredient. So I know that if someone thinks, yes, I like the, um, I like the preserved lemons, but I'm going to get them for this. So then otherwise I've got a vegetable stew you can use. I've got some Brussels sprouts that they go in, I've also got the drink, you know, so it's actually, for home cooks, it's not really helpful um, to have stuff in your pantry that you just use once and then you don't know what to do with it. I don't like waste. Mm -hmm. I think it's a bit longer. I'm very much looking forward to these. We've got another question coming in from yes. Gabby. She is curious, what's your favorite simple recipe using five ingredients or less? She loves your marmite, spaghetti marmite. <laughs> I really do. Well, you don't even need five ingredients, really, when you're cooking. I mean, one of the best, you know, you know, spaghetti with garlic and, you know, the chili flakes. You call, yeah. don't call them chili flakes, do you? you call them, chili flakes. Yeah, yeah you know, you crushed throw, chili. Like, anchovy filet in with uh, the garlic and anchovy, chili. Just anchovies is nice enough. Yeah. I mean, anchovies, you know, olive oil, onions, yeah. also incredibly good. Yeah. And also, when you make pasta anyway, so much of the sauce is created by the pasta cooking liquid yeah. Yeah. that 
makes everything emulsifying and makes it so creamy, I mean, without cream, that really you could just, frankly, you could just do onions and oil and, and pasta, couldn't you? I might. They're not uniform size, but I think, I mean, I don't mind how underdone they are, so I might start taking them off in a minute. Yeah, they're pretty close. Yeah, it's, like, it's just that these ones are fatter. Whereas these ones look like they're any minute now going to be perfect. I might start ferrying them. These are great. Yeah, I actually I you. Okay, before I, everything smokes out too much. go that way now. Right. A bit more strewing. I didn't do that much chopping. No, no I know, but we did a lot of talking. This is like um, close approximation. Of I am going to have to use your fork because I used mine earlier. Yeah. So what I would do is I'd do it like this, but put the rest of the sauce so people can help themselves. And you know what's really delicious as well with this? If you steam some little baby potatoes at the same time, because baby potatoes dipped into this sauce. Oh my God, make myself hungry. But also I often make this on a, um, have this with a roasted sweet potato. That sounds nice. That's, a, that's what I make often for my supper <laughs> at home. That sauce is so burning. Sorry, it's right. burning. The, it's getting uh, a bit of the chili fine. burning. That's yeah, what's chef, making we'll us. Well, I turned that off, but I think, yeah. Uh -huh. We have a few viewers that are very impressed with you cooking without an apron. They're worried about your sweater. But they're yes, I know, but I seem to be all right. Yes. I, although I am messy. I'll tell you the funny thing is, I cook without an apron, but I have to eat with an apron because I'm a very uh -huh. messy eater. <laughs> Yeah, I'll line this up next to yours. Very, very good. Lamb chops, chop salad. That's Excellent. Right there. It really is. That's mine at any rate. Uh, do we have anything else to say to the people watching on Facebook Live here? No questions. You wish you were here so you could taste <laughs> the to I'm going to put more pomegranates on this uh, okay. because I feel we've got too much green going on now. Sure. And I feel this would be, there we are. Well, this was a lot of fun. I, it I really was so nice. Oh, it was lovely. Thank you. Right. Thanks for having me here. Thanks, Facebook Live. We'll see bye you bye. Soon.